Shalom. This is Yair David speaking to you from Jerusalem. I represent Britain. Hebrew awareness movement of those ten tribes of Israel. We study and spread uh, awareness concerning the whereabouts of the lost ten tribes. Today, the world lost ten tribes are descendants of the majority of the Israelite tribes who were lost, who lost consciousness of their ancestry. Originally, you had 12 tribes in the land of Israel, 12 tribes together. After the death of King Solomon, Rehoboam, King Rehoboam ruled over them. In his time, 10 of the northern tribes seceded. They separated, they set up their own kingdom. And uh, they had their own kingdom of Israel. One could say 10 tribes in the north and two tribes in the south. The tribes in the south were uh, Judah and Benjamin. After that, a good portion of the tribe of Levi joined them and also representatives of the other tribes. But nevertheless, uh, in principle, the ten tribes who remained in the north separate and uh, they were conquered by the Assyrians, taken into exile and lost consciousness of their ancestry. And uh, people don't know who they are, where they are. Whereas the tribes in the south, in the kingdom of Judah, they became ancestors of the Jewish people. The present-day Jews, at least the core, the core, the basic body of the present-day Jewish people descend from former inhabitants of the kingdom of Judah. Ten tribes, as we said, were exiled, taken to areas of the Assyrian Empire, and then they assimilated into the ways of the Goyim, to the ways of the Gentiles around them. They federated with them and in different groups they uh, moved. They moved along the various paths, ways of migration, but ultimately all converged in the same areas, in the same areas of Western Europe, of Northern Europe, and in the British Isles. And from there they populated uh, North America, Canada, the USA, also Australia, New Zealand, and related areas. And that is where their descendants are to be found today. And that is what we do. We tell people about this and we have proofs concerning it. We have proofs from all different sources, from the Bible, from history, archaeology, and for nearly any field of study, so there's something of, of relevance to say on this subject. We study it and we have brought proofs from it. We also study uh, rabbinical sources. We study rabbinical sources because they are one of the major uh, sources of evidence. And because we ourselves personally have an interest, a stake in knowing about it and being able to prove it from a Jewish point of view. So first of all, it is concerning the Bible. Concerning the Bible, biblical proofs to the lost in times amongst Western nations. We have uh, evidence of uh, the Bible predicted that the lost in times, or that, that portion of Israel, that would become politically dominant would be amongst the most important and most numerous groups of peoples on earth. See Genesis 15, 5, 22, 17, 24, 60, 32, 12 and others. Uh, they would also be the most powerful. See Genesis 27, 9, Numbers 24, 7, Micah 5, 7 to 9. They would be the richest peoples on earth to possess the most mineral and agricultural resources that have a or be close to it. See Genesis 27, 28, 49, 25, Deuteronomy 33, 13, 16, Isaiah 2 to 8, that also live in the best places in the most salubrious climates. Uh, see Isaiah 41, 8 to 9, that would be in islands. Isaiah 42, 4, 49, 1. Jeremiah 31, in peninsulas and at the continental extremities, at the extremities of the continental masses. See Deuteronomy 33.13, Isaiah 24.16, 26.15, and others. There would be seafarers, Isaiah 42.6. They would gain control over strategic points regarding their potential adversaries. This is something that the British did and that the America has considered to, continued to do after them. So Genesis 22, 16, 17, 24, 16. It would be like a lion and a unicorn. See Numbers 24, 8 to 9. A bald-headed eagle. See Micah 1 to 16. These are symbols of Britain, of Great Britain, and of 
the USA. They've also been largely, largely unaware of their Israelite identity and the practice of non-Jewish religion. See, I was there 2 to 8, 2 to 13, uh, 2 to 16, and so on. Judah would not on the whole know who they are. See, I was there 49, 21. The numerous other identifying characteristics when you take them all together, you take them as one composite whole, giving giving uh, an outline, the delineation of different aspects of the nations concerned and then putting them all together you only get, you get people amongst Western nations, especially the English speaking peoples. They're the only ones that fit all of the criteria, uh, we'll call, it, call all of the identifying signs. In addition to that the Jewish sages also gave us evidence Commentators such as Rashi, Ibn Ezra, Radak, Nachmanari, Sababano, and so on, uh, stretching from the Middle Ages up into the, up into the discovery of America in 1492, the Ababano, they all described the Lost End tribes in the last ten days and, and their commentaries on scripture. They confirm our biblical understanding of the biblical sources, so that is where the Lost End tribes are. Also, Midrashim and the rabbinical texts uh, interpreted the biblical sources in the same way as we have done, according to literal meaning, taking to an extreme, and according to certain general laws that everything has to be complement, complementary to everything else, and that all Contra apparent contradictions may be resolved and that in the end the resolution strengthens the general case instead of contradicting it. We also have uh, Hebrew meanings of names and tribal characteristics and lots of rabbinical commentary which helps us uh, confirm, confirm our identifications. For instance, we are shown how the name America, the name America is derived from America with Spushi an Italian sailor who proved that the continent of America was not part of Asia, but was a separate continent. And he gave his name, he was named Americo Vespucci, he gave his name to America, but he got his name from a Jewish noble a few hundred years before his time, who was known as Mechia, or Ha-Mechiri. It's a nickname in Ha-Mechiri in, in Hebrew Jewish sources. But he was also known to the Gentiles in this area, in this area of southern France. And uh, he was uh, a legend in his own time, in the later days. And because due to him, the name America, his name became famous, became popular, and it was in Latinized form. It was changed. Uh, America is a Hebrew word. It's difficult for European tongues to speak it, to pronounce it. So, Hamachiri or Mechia, as he was also known as, Hamechiri, Hamechia, uh, became America in Latinized form. America gave his name to the continent of America. So indirectly, indirectly, America is named after Hamechiri. And what does his name mean? His name literally means the offspring, the descendants of Manasseh. Manasseh was, this, was one of the sons of Joseph. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And each one of them became tribes in their own right, and according to a lot of other indications, we tend to identify America, that is the USA, as being dominated by the tribe of Manasseh, which fits being a descendant, having amongst them descendants of Mechia. Also, rabbinical sources, Jewish philosophy and so on, they help explain the different separate rule, roles separate tasks of Judah and Joseph and what they have to do and what they should do and what they have been doing and it all fits together so that is that is uh, by way of introduction